This is Story Robot. Welcome to r slash pro revenge. Our first story of today is, hippity hoppity, this is no longer your property to manage. After graduating college my girlfriend and I moved to a new state where she was accepted into an engineering program. We found a lovely garden apartment style complex that advertised 100 megabits per second internet speed included in the price among a few other amenities. When we met the property manager, he seemed strict but well-mannered, nothing out of the ordinary. Until we signed the lease. The first problem. Suddenly, walking into his office was not allowed without an appointment. I had come by to ask a question, saw him browsing social media, and figured he was as available as he made himself to us when we first came by, unannounced, to view a model apartment. Nope. He refused to answer my question and asked me to make an appointment via email. The second problem. The terms of our lease included an attachment to complete within 48 hours of accepting the keys that details all discrepancies within the unit. We submitted the attachment via email around the 40th hour. The property manager responded that the terms recently changed from 48 to 24 hours and since we had passed 24 hours, we would be held liable for all found damages. When citing our copy of the lease which explicitly stated 48 hours, he informs us that we signed an outdated copy and would need to make an appointment to come by the office and sign a new lease. The third problem. The internet speed was not 100 megabits per second as advertised. It was less than 15 megabits per second off peak and about approximately 5 megabits per second on peak. We again contacted the property manager to complain but were referred to make an appointment. The fourth problem. We made an appointment to address the previous three problems. During this meeting and after I finished voicing our issues, the property manager leans forward and says, there are other communities in this neighborhood that may be more accepting of people like you and your girlfriend. You're welcome to break the lease and leave. People like you and your girlfriend. I had thought he was referencing our no-nonsense response to his nonsense, daily communication, scheduling multiple meetings to address these issues, etc., but my girlfriend believed he was speaking towards our skin colors. Her, a black woman, and myself, a white man. My girlfriend jokingly told me to check my privilege before getting serious and explaining to me that we were experiencing discrimination at the very least. The solution. I did some research and discovered the property manager worked for a larger organization that owned several complexes throughout the country. I found their director of human resources on LinkedIn and made a connection. I then emailed her copies of all email correspondence, screenshots of the lease, pictures of the internet speed flags advertised by the road, and more screenshots of online speed tests. We further noted his comment and the implications behind it. The human resources director replied within a few hours and promised us she would look into the issue. About two days later, the property manager called and asked us to come by his office at our convenience. We showed up near the end of the day, and sat down across from him. He then proceeded to ask us if we would be willing to write a letter stating we accepted his apology, despite not yet offering said apology, and in return he would credit us a month's rent, accept our damages attachment, and promise to have the ISP on site within a week to assess the internet issues. We declined. He got personal with us and revealed his job may be at stake and asked us to reconsider. My girlfriend leaned forward and said, there are other communities in this neighborhood that may be more accepting of people like you. You're welcome to leave. The property manager was replaced in a week with a super sweet older woman who not only gave us all the things the original property manager had promised, the one month credit, accepting the damages attachment and then further scheduling maintenance to fix said damages, having the ISP assess and upgrade the internet to promise speeds, but she also made it clear her office was always open for anything we may need. I looked up the old property manager about a few months later on LinkedIn. Still unemployed. Our second story of today is. Live in a rental for over a year without paying rent. Good luck in jail. This has all be finalized so I decided to post it, for obvious reasons I didn't want to post it while it was ongoing. Last summer I bought a house trailer and decided to rent it out. It needed some work so I posted two months free rent for putting carpet down in the living room, hooking up the hot water heater and putting in a toilet. Got a nice couple with a newborn willing to do it. Great. No lease, month to month. No security deposit and the rent was $450 a month. So they did the work so I didn't ask for rent for two months. Everything was fine. Side note, there are a few little state laws that come into play. If you don't pay rent for three consecutive months you are considered a squatter, which means the landlord doesn't have to fix the property and can actually padlock it and deny you entry. If you're on house arrest and get formally evicted, you could be violated for it. Also you can be formally evicted even if you have already moved out so the landlord can get rent due. Also even though there are eviction bans, if it happened before the ban then it can still go through. Plus a few other conditions that still allow someone to be evicted. It's up to the judge really. Fast forward 5 months and still no rent money. 
Yes they had a newborn and they were young and didn't have a lot of money, but the husband can spend $1,500 on a new engine for his project car. They can afford to go out to eat and spend money on electronics, but no rent. So after that third month I did nothing. The weather was turning cold. I didn't put in the furnace like I promised and if they hadn't had a newborn I would have padlocked the house. They were bragging about their tax refund. I gave them a shot to catch up and they basically said that they knew their rights and were in a rent strike, illegally I might add. You will see later. Covid happened, husband got laid off so I gave them a break. When he went back to work I asked for back rent again and was told to beep off. I finally had enough. I told them they had 14 days to get out or I was doing a formal eviction and seeing he was on house arrest he knew what that meant. I honestly was trying to keep him from having to go back to jail and keep an eviction off of their record. I was trying to be nice and civvy. So they left and I cut my losses, until I checked the property. Everything they put in the removed. Everything they got free rent for was gone. I got pissed and filed for a formal eviction. It didn't go as they hoped. They said I didn't provide heat so they went on a rent strike. Only they didn't file that with the courts or hold the money aside. They just thought they could stop paying rent. What they put into the trailer was less than the rent. The judge agreed with me that seeing they took everything I was due those two months rent. And the biggest. He started slamming my character so I said, well you didn't tell me you were going to be going on house arrest when you rented the property, before then the judge looked bored, but he perked up. He asked them if that was true, they responded that it was and he was ready to make his ruling. I received 15 months back rent at $450 a month and $2,000 in damages because the way they removed the stuff they damaged a lot of things. As for him, the judge said he had no choice but to turn the eviction over to his parole officer. Fast forward to this month. His house arrest was violated and he was arrested. They actually had the nerve to ask me to speak on his behalf. I didn't. Ruling was his remaining six months are now being spent in jail, they have a bad eviction on their record and they owe me money. Know the law before you play the game. Our final story of today is. Defense lawyers kept stealing our trash in hopes of making my aunt, who was raped by her doctor, look like she was, getting around, and wanted it. We placed something else in the trash. Many moons ago, I was about 10-ish, my aunt was a victim of rape while she was getting a routine surgery from her doctor. Needless to say things got really messed rather quickly. Now, we don't have a lot of money so the doctors obviously lawyered up to the teeth and they were trying to dig up anything they could find to paint my aunt in a bad light. She get her one lawyer and soldiered on. A few months into the lawsuit we noticed random cars kept stealing all of our trash so she hired a private eye and found it was the defense lawyers doing. Now, their cars were pretty nice. It was always a Range Rover or a black BMW, possible 7 Series because it was quite large that would pull up and dump the entire contents of the trash in the trunk and speed off. This was unsettling to say the least so my aunt and mom hatched a brilliant plan. There were 4 cats in the house so we had a rather large supply cat piss and beep at our disposal. We simply saved up enough of this until the trash was about 3 quarters full of straight up litter. Oh, not bagged either, just right into the can. It was then topped off with random shredded documents, it looked like a jackpot of a find, and ton of smell good stuff to help hide the stink. The next trash day, like clockwork, they showed up in the black BMW and two people quickly picked up the can and dumped the entire contents in the trunk. They were furious and started loosing their beep at the end of the driveway. To top it all off my aunt walked outside with a cup of coffee, waved and said good morning all cheerful like, they sped off and we never saw them again. She ended up winning the case about a year later. Edit. Let me clarity that the litter wasn't a full dump from pan to can, it was sifted over a long period of time and collected. Two men tilted the can in the edge of the trunk and then lifted from the bottom. I'd say about 70-80% got into the trunk when they realized what was happening and let go of the can. Thank you for watch, error, error, error. Problem detected, not enough subscribers, please subscribe like and comment.